When, welcome once again to Product One's technical web series. Um, the last video we posted dealt with um, inserting dimensions and geometric tolerances on a 3D part, and that is referred to as model-based definition. And we specify how much of value that is in making a model the single source of truth and not heavily reliant on a two-dimensional drawing. What we're doing this week is we're expanding a little bit on that topic. So we're going to look at something called GDNT Advisor. So GDNT simply stands for Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing. So what GDNT is essentially is a, it's a symbolic language used in engineering drawing uh, and models to define allowable deviations of a feature geometry in a component. So now this language consists of dimensions, tolerances, symbols, definitions, rules, and conventions that can be used precisely to communicate the, requirement, the functional requirements of a location, orientation, the size, and form of each feature of the design model. So that's the power of GDNT. So now the GDNT advisor basically walks you through essentially putting what we call geometric tolerances. So let's go uh, into deep details of that. So if your license does have GDNT uh, in it, you just go application GDNT and it pre presents with you a whole lot of other tools that you can utilize. So before I even go any further, I would like to showcase uh, this button here. The show and hide constraint state, as you can see, funny enough, this model becomes grayed out. There's a reason for this. So if I were to present, uh, you can't see at the bottom there. So essentially, what we've got uh, at the bottom is a legend. And that legend looks like this. You'll see that when the component is fully constrained, it becomes green. When it's partial, it's yellow, unconstrained gray, which is the current state at the moment. And constrained by a surface profile in note, it becomes blue. So why am I showing you this? Because our whole idea is to make this component to be either green and blue or green in totality. So how do you apply this? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to specify a tolerance feature. You select, let's say, a surface in this instance, and immediately the system itself allows you to specify the tolerance scheme, and it also walks you through the available geometric tolerances that are applicable based on your selection. What that means is, as you can see there, there's an asterisk next to one of these features so it enables you if i can zoom in to say that the flatness is basically the allowable uh, selection here you can obviously do a profile of a surface as well however you can't pick cylindricity for an example because it's not appropriate so for somebody that has never used any geometric tolerances this is a dream in a sense that you specify the deviation and the system identifies that you need a primary datum feature here. And by just simply saying accept, I can now specify that geometric tolerance. I will go back into show model constraint. And as you can see, now that particular surface is green. That means that if you remember, that is now fully constrained. I will just specify the constraint of a shaft. And just like before, it only highlights items that are applicable. So I can make that surface perpendicular uh, to the selected surface. And obviously I can specify what is the tolerance value. And I can also specify things like your material condition. So let's say maximum material condition. And as you can see, it makes this to be my secondary uh, reference, which is datum B. And I know this is a little bit cluttered at the moment. And just like we've seen before, I can actually move these datum features, uh, annotations rather. So let me just do this. I'll just select this and say, let's move this 
to that particular area. And as you can see, this is how it looks at the moment. And just to make it a lot neater uh, and, and so forth, I can even change the orientation of this. So there is the orientation. I can actually flip this if I want to, or just say, you know what? I think this will fix what I, I want. So this is what I'm currently having at the moment. So of course you can move this to the other side if you want to as well, All right? Right, so now that we've defined those two surfaces, it goes without saying that those two surfaces are now constrained. And just to finish this design off, I'll just pick that plane over there and I'll just quickly accept the default. And the reason why I will just accept this is because I know now that I've actually reached the minimum requirements that I will. I can actually select the holes as well and go overboard with these geometric tolerances. However, I can also do something like this. I can go and say edit properties and say how about I apply what you call a general profile tolerance. So this is the one and it will state here that unless otherwise stated, this is the profile that applies to this particular model. And I can also specify the value as well. And immediately when I do that, you get to see that now this model is fully constrained and the rest actually has what we call a general profile tolerance. And of course, I can showcase the note here if I wanted to as well. All right, this has been uh, GDMT advisor, you can see that the workflow is pretty easy. If you need further information regarding this, please do not uh, forget to drop the comments uh, in the comment section. Like the video, subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell to get more videos such as this. Until next time, goodbye.